this thing has options for that. This cat's about to knock this right. There it went. It's on the floor now, okay? So first thing we got to do is we got to install gut. And I'm going to do that from the command line because this is a command line tutorial. So we are working with the most latest, bestest release of 6.7.0. So let's go ahead and copy this link and get it. And then we're going to unzip it. And we're going to move gut add-ons to here. Okay, and then we're going to remove the directory gut and kill the zip file. And there we go. Guts installed. That's all there is to it. Now you might be asking why didn't I just clone or something like that. Well, the actual project um, has a lot of files that aren't needed so that the project itself can be tested and ran and stuff like that. All that you really need for the plugin is what's in this add-ons gut. So now that we've got gut installed, we need to launch it. And so first we need to figure out how to launch Godot, Godot from the command line. And I'm on a Mac. Your mileage will vary based off what operating system you're using. But uh, here on my Mac, it's application Godot.app uh, contents Mac OS. Godot. So hitting that should launch Godot. I'm going to go ahead and give it the help option so we don't launch the whole thing. And that worked. So the next step is that we want to tell it to run this script right here. Uh, that has the command line interface in it. So uh, in order to do that, we give it a path of our current working directory. And we tell it to run a script of add-ons gut gut command line. Uh, now all of the gut options start with G so that uh, Godot doesn't swallow them up and I get a chance to parse them. So the help for gut is dash GH. And there we go. We got to the help. We're running gut from the command line. Now that is an awful lot to type though and I don't want to type that every time so I'm going to go ahead and make an alias. I'm going to say alias gut equals this right here. So now I should just be able to do a gut gh and boom. Perfect. Okay, now that we're running gut, we need to run some tests. So let's go ahead and make our test directory. And uh, we're going to make unit tests. So let's make test unit and then let's touch test unit test sample GD, and let's get to editing All right. so here we go first thing we have to do is we have to in our test group we have to extend the test class from gut and that is done by extends res add-ons gut test.gd and now we can put tests in here uh, test nothing uh, let's go ahead and just mark this pending because we don't have anything to do yet this does not test a thing alright we've got a test we now need to run it so let's look at the help what are we going to do okay so I'm going to tell it Hey, you've got this directory here. So if we do a gut gdir equals uh, res uh, test unit, this should tell gut we've got uh, we've got this one directory where our unit tests are created. We created a test that started with the word test. Uh, we created a script that started with the word test. We created a test that started with the word test. Everything should check out. Um, one real important thing to notice is spaces here are very bad uh, so make sure that you don't miss your uh, that you don't put spaces in there run it and we've got one pending test that does nothing everything's running okay let's go ahead and quit ew what's all this red right here 
Well, this just has to do with a bunch of stuff that's not getting cleaned up at the end of the gut run. Doesn't have anything to do with what you did or anything wrong with your test. So you can pretty much just ignore it. I hope to get it cleaned up over time, but um, for right now at the command line, it's just going to be a little ugly at the end. Command line options are wonderful, but maybe we don't want to specify. Maybe we want to put them into a config file and gut supports the dot gut config dot json file. Um, so let's take a look at that. Let's run the help. And we've got this option right here, which will print out a sample of a gut config file. Now it prints out two samples, one that has all of the options as they have been specified on the command line and what it's got right now, and uh, another set of options that are all known in case you want to fill that out. So let's, let's try that again with some directories. Equals res test unit. And we can see this one's got that in there. Let's go ahead and get our exit option back in there. And we can say should exit equals true. So let's copy this. This has got everything the way we want it. Let's touch dot gut config dot json back over to the editor, paste that in there, let's make it formatted pretty. There we go. Let's get rid of some of these options because not all of them uh, we're concerned with, so we don't care about that, we don't care about that right now, we don't care about, let's leave a log level in there, we'll include subders, we'll leave that as false for now. Uh, Opacity is fine. Prefix is always going to be the same. Uh, should exit true. Maximize false is fine. The suffix is always going to be the same. And there we go. <clears throat> so we should now be able to just run gut and it'll exit and it'll run tests from this directory. There you go. Gut's also got some options for running specific tests instead of running the entire suite. We have the select option, which will select a single script to be run. We've got an inner class that we can tell it to run, which we'll get to in a minute. And there is also unit test name, which we can tell it to run one specific unit test. So let's go ahead and make some more tests. And we're going to do that by copying tests. Uh, test 2 and test I, I, I. and finally test 4. Okay, if we go back to where we were and run gut again, cool. We've got all four of our tests. Now, let's say we just wanted to run this guy right here. We don't want to run all four of them. We only want to run one test because that's where we're working right now. And so we throw in the select option and we just give it part of the name enough to match. And there we go. We've just run one test. One test script with one test in it. Let's hop in there and add some more tests. Let's make a test failing. Cert false true. Let me back, run that again. We've got two tests. Now we just want to run this guy. So let's put unit test name equals failing. And now we've run just this script in, or just this test in this script. We can move real fast now. Um, we could if we wanted to. Um, just run all unit tests with the name failing in them. And so you can see that we did run four scripts, but only one test matched. So that's the only guy that got run. So we've run uh, specific tests and scripts. Now let's, let's get some inner classes into the mix. Um, let's go ahead and make another directory. Uh, test integration. 
um, and touch test integration test inner classes. Let's hop over to the editor here. Bring this guy up. He also needs to extend. Uh, let's make an inner class. Test inner class. Very important. Uh, it's got to start with test, otherwise it won't find it. Uh, and it also has to extend test.gd. Function test nothing. Assert false true. Let's get back over here and got again. And still four. And that is because we didn't tell it where it was. So let's hop into the gut config. Let's knock this down to just test and set this to true. So now it should find all tests anywhere under the test directory and run gut again. And now we got five. Cool. And there we go. All right. So let's hop back in here. Let's give it. Uh, let's give it another class. Test another inner class, and it also needs to extend and. Insert equal one and one. <coughs> So let's now do a gut inner. Cool. Now we got uh, we've got two inner classes running. We just ran the one script. We see both of our tests. We see things passing and failing. Um, let's run just one of those. Let's run the one that's passing. And that guy's name has another. So, g inner class equals another. There we go. We just ran one script and one inner class. And we could run one test within that one inner class inside that one script if we want. So we've got a lot of control here on what tests run and what tests do not so that we can iterate quickly, test everything, and then when we get done, just gut again and run everything. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We ran a bunch of tests. Uh, we can kick them all off from the command line. We didn't even launch the editor once. We didn't hop into Godot or Godot or Godot or you know, the cat again uh, or anything. Uh, we did it all super cool from the command line. So get cracking. Let me know what you think. Uh, always looking for feedback. And happy testing. See ya.